uh, and surgeon at Kalilan Clinic Orthopedics. I'm presenting uh, a uh, lecture about osteoarthritis of the fingers, uh, exclu excluding the thumb. I would like to talk a little bit about the basic science, uh, demographics, risk factors, and uh, medical treatment uh, before uh, talking about the uh, surgical options. And I will uh, touch uh, in my discussion topics about uh, MP joint arthritis, PIP, and DIP joints, again, excluding the thumb MP joint, which is a subject of a different uh, talk. First, I would like to talk about a normal cartilage, which is uh, formed uh, about 10% out of cells, chondrocytes, uh, and 90% uh, is uh, matrix, which is uh, primarily composed of uh, type 2 collagen as well as uh, proteoglycans, with agrican being the most common. Those uh, do attract water, creating the the soft uh, appearance of the cartilage. So in conclusion, the cartilage is a network of collagen, fibrils, chondrocytes, and also matrix, which does allow uh, load and motion, having a good elasticity. In osteoarthritis, uh, the changes uh, start with disorganization of the collagen framework, uh, as well as a decrease in type 2 collagen. Uh, with concomitant increase in uh, IL-6 interleukin-6, which is a pro-inflammatory uh, cytokine uh, produced by our body. There is decrease in proteoglycans as well as increase in water content. Uh, MMP, which are metalloproteinases, there are some enzymes that are causing breakdown uh, within this matrix. And... Uh, due to inadequate repair process, this results in fissuring of the cartilage, as noted in the picture on the right. Factors that uh, are involved in osteoarthritis are uh, increased age, uh, female gender with uh, ladies being more uh, prone to uh, get arthritis earlier in life. Uh, due to uh, differences in uh, water content and resistance of the cartilage. Of course, uh, prior injury, which may cause uh, damage uh, to the cartilage. Family history, which is uh, thought to uh, uh, cause uh, arthritic changes at the younger age, as well as obesity, which is causing overload of certain joints, but this is less uh, involved in hand arthritis. Uh, Osteo is involved in arthritis of lower extremity, hip and knees, knees for example. Treatment, uh, the first treatment, uh, first line of treatment is uh, oral medication, and uh, acetaminophen is uh, very uh, widely available uh, first line of treatment. Uh, it's a very mild uh, anti-inflammatory. Uh, it does release the pro uh, uh, blocks the release of prostaglandin E2 uh, centrally, and through this uh, process, decreasing the pain. <coughs> Again, it is a very weak anti-inflammatory. Typical uh, non-steroidal uh, anti-inflammatories uh, like ibuprofen, naproxen, and so forth. Those are non-selective inhibitors of cyclooxygenase, which is an enzyme that uh, catalyzes, uh, participates in formation of prostaglandins, which are pro-inflammatory proteins. Uh, slightly newer uh, uh, COX-2 selective inhibitors uh, like Celebrex uh, do cause less uh, GI effects and less side effects with a similar good improvement in, anti, uh, in uh, inflammation, similar anti-inflammatory properties. Other treatments like glucosamine and chondroitin sulfates uh, have been tried uh, as those are part of the normal cartilage and several randomized control trials uh, to date were uh, completed and those were shown to have only a small to potentially moderate effect with uh, Occasional improvement in pain and function, but no improvement in uh, radiographic findings. 
of the of the joint. Apparently, they slow the progression of joint pains narrowing, according to uh, one study from 2007. Topical non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen gel, very uh, commonly used Voltaren gel, which is diclofenac, or an iflumic acid gel, uh, they have been shown to uh, be more effective uh, for pain relief than uh, placebo. And uh, between those uh, components, they uh, seem to be about equivalent. Those are applied uh, adjacent to an affected joint with the knowledge that uh, penetration of the gel through the skin is limited to about two to three millimeters. So uh, we have to be cognizant where, where at which location we recommend our patients to, uh, to use those uh, topical NSAIDs. Talking, talking about uh, joints in particular, I would start distally with uh, DIP joint, arthritis, distal interphalangeal joint, which is uh, the most common uh, site for osteoarthritis in a hand. And the one finger that stands out as being the truly most common and first site for osteoarthritis in the hand is the index finger DIP joint. This is uh, because the highest forces uh, with grip uh, per, uh, per surface area do happen at uh, the IP joint. The symptoms are pain, deformity, which occurs later in the disease process, and stiffness, loss of motion. Initial treatment is uh, splinting, mostly at nighttime, which is done mostly for comfort, although uh, excessive splinting is causing uh, further worsening in stiffness. Uh, and that's why uh, motion is uh, recommended for uh, any arthritic joint. Also steroids, either uh, topical or oral, as well as injections, and uh, also oral NSAIDs. A very common presentation of uh, distal interfal interphalangeal joint arthritis is a uh, mucous cyst at uh, that location, which is a degenerative cyst and often accompanies uh, situ uh, patient, uh, situations with uh, relatively mild osteoarthritis with small osteophytes, uh, some mild joint narrowing, but no significant arthritic changes. Not uncommonly, there are nail changes uh, like a ridge uh, within the nail uh, due to presence of the cyst over a general matrix. Uh, at, uh, at the base of the uh, nail. Uh, treatment, uh, aspiration and injection with steroid have been uh, attempted in the past, but have a relatively high recurrence rate and also uh, does uh, increase the risk for septic arthritis and it is uh, not uh, recommended at this point. Uh, in case of uh, surgical excision, the recurrence is uh, quite uh, rare, although it is possible. When we offer our patients uh, surgical excision of a mucous cyst, we should always uh, advise them that uh, nail ridging and the nail plate changes do not always resolve after a cyst excision. Key of the surgical uh, excision is actually excision of the underlying osteophyte and the stalk of the cyst, not as much as the cyst itself, uh, which is uh, significantly decreasing the chance of recurrence. It is a uh, surgery can be easily be done under local anesthesia with patient awake. Has been shown that immobilization uh, does reduce uh, pain significantly, but uh, function as expected does not improve. Um, also, uh, as a uh, more definitive surgical treatment for severe uh, DIP joint uh, arthritis would be arthrodesis, essentially fusion of the DIP joint, which can be done in with multiple techniques. The most common technique currently is uh, use of a headless compression screw. And there's uh, multiple uh, such screws on the market, uh, most of them straight. And uh, for the past few years, uh, there are screws that have a certain angle around five degrees to provide a better pinch strength. Uh, 
those uh, screws that have an angle uh, built in them, they are slightly more uh, technically challenging to be placed. Uh, it's uh, through this, it's a reliable procedure, does result in um, excellent resolution of pain, obviously creates a stiff joint, it's, uh, it's a fused joint at this point, but the function in general is uh, excellent and fusion is very well tolerated. Uh, moving proximally to the PIP joint, this is uh, not as commonly affected by uh, primary osteoarthritis. Uh, it's a uh, higher chance of this having a post uh, to be post-traumatic or be uh, in context of a uh, systemic uh, inflammatory uh, disease, autoimmune disease. Still, most cases of uh, arthritis at the PIP joint are uh, osteoarthritis. Conservative treatment uh, is, consists of splinting and uh, corticosteroid injection with, uh, in general, good uh, but only temporary improvement. And surgical options uh, include uh, arthroplasty or fusion. Arthroplasty means replacement of the joint with an artificial joint, uh, which could be either silicon uh, or uh, pyrocarbon uh, joint replacement. Those, uh, so arthroplasty is preferred for the middle ring and small fingers to preserve motion for grip, but uh, fusion uh, can be considered for the index finger PIP joint, although uh, replacement using an implant is also possible for the index finger PIP joint. Uh, patients should be counseled uh, regarding use of the hand and avoidance of uh, lateral uh, pinch in case of arthroplasty for the index finger to avoid the uh, lateral displacement of the, of the joint after uh, replacement. Uh, moving further proximally to the MP joint, uh, again, this is relatively uncommon, probably the least common of those three joints. It's more common uh, to uh, be involved, this joint is more common to be involved in idiopathic arthritis as well as uh, inflammatory, autoimmune inflammatory arthritis or uh, crystalline arthritis like gout or pseudogout. The index and middle fingers are most frequently uh, involved. Treatment again starts with splinting, which does uh, improve pain on short term, but unfortunately uh, may create further stiffness. Intraarticular steroid injection, and uh, I will talk in a few minutes about uh, steroid injection technique for all those joints, as well as uh, oral anti-inflammatories as well as topical anti-inflammatories. Surgical treatment, uh, we prefer arthroplasty uh, for the middle ring and small finger, similar to the PIP joint, uh, but also uh, arthroplasty can be uh, and can safely be uh, completed for the MP joint of the index finger. Uh, Although in, the, in uh, patients should be counseled about uh, avoidance of lateral uh, pinch, as mentioned for the PIP joint in such a case. Uh, if we need the uh, stability at MP joint of the index finger, then arthrodesis is preferred. For the thumb MP joint arthritis, arthrodesis is the, uh, the best uh, option as it provides good stability and excellent function of the thumb. When we uh, attempt to fuse uh, any of those uh, MP, PIP, or DIP joints, um, those are the recommended uh, angles uh, at which those joints should be fused. Uh, easy way to remember is we start with 25 degrees for the MP joint of the index finger, and we, we increase with five degrees as we, as we move ulnarly, getting to 40 degrees for the small finger MP joint. And then we start again with 40 degrees for the index finger PIP joint and add five degrees as we move ulnarly all the way to 55 degrees for the small finger PIP joint. 
DIP joints are in general uh, recommended uh, or I would say in general fused in full extension as the headless screws are straight, uh, although newer screws with five degrees of uh, bent have uh, been made available on the market. Uh, index finger uh, DIP joint, uh, it's extremely functional at uh, full extension, while for the middle ring and small finger, a five degrees uh, flexion uh, is uh, better for uh, function, although uh, full extension zero degrees is uh, providing excellent function as well. When we uh, compare uh, injections uh, in those joints, when we compare steroid injection with uh, hyaluronate, um, a prospective study was completed some years ago uh, looking at uh, both uh, types of injections. They were essentially equivalent with no significant difference uh, in outcome that could uh, suggest that one or the other uh, injection is more beneficial. At this point, for uh, hand joints, uh, hyaluronate uh, injections are rarely uh, done, mostly steroid injections. It's what we uh, use for uh, pain relief and uh, temporary uh, improvement. Now, uh, talking about injections in the hand, I will start with uh, describing the agents that we use. We can use short acting steroids like dexamethasone sodium, which has the advantage of a quick onset of action within a few hours. Slightly shorter uh, duration of action of uh, slightly less than two weeks. And another advantage is uh, uh, lack of post injection flare, as dexamethasone is water soluble. Then we have intermediate acting and long acting uh, steroids. Uh, most commonly used is uh, probably triamcinolone, uh, which has an onset of uh, action around two to three days. A duration of action uh, of up to a few months, but may cause a post-injection flare as it is insoluble in, uh, in water. In that case, we uh, recommend to our patients to use uh, some oral NSAIDs uh, the afternoon or the evening after the injection and may use some uh, local ice to assist in inflammation. When we inject uh, those joints with steroids, there's a small risk for septic arthritis, so clean uh, preparation of the skin is important. We should avoid intraarticular injections if there's any suspicion of superficial infection involving skin or subcutaneous tissue. Repeated cortisone injections into the same site with too uh, high frequency may uh, contribute uh, to thinning of the articular cartilage. Uh, Articular laxity with ligament uh, stretching, uh, as well as tendon rupture due to protein catabolism. Although uh, such reports are only anecdotal, and there's no uh, clear, no no randomized study to look at this uh, complication. More superficial injections also may cause uh, skin atrophy or uh, hypopigmentation that may last for months or up to a year or two. Uh, as mentioned earlier, pain after injection uh, should be treated with uh, NSAID and uh, local ice. When we talk about each particular uh, joint, DIP joints, we essentially never or very rarely uh, inject. We should use a very small amount of uh, uh, fluid uh, for that joint as it, is, as it is a very small joint. When we inject the PIP joint, we should not exceed 0.3 to 0.4 ml of uh, fluid to avoid stretching and damage of the joint capsule. The injection uh, portal is dorsal and we should see uh, uh, ballooning of the capsule. Uh, Studies in the past have shown that without ultrasound guidance, the needle is intraarticular in only 56% of the cases. So if aspiration is important for diagnosis, we should be using ultrasound. Although uh, other studies has clearly shown that uh, even a juxtaarticular injection of a steroid does provide similar pain relief 
and uh, functional improvement compared to an intraarticular injection. Again, juxtarticular injection adjacent to the joint is just as efficient. This is how it's done. Dorsal uh, approach, uh, needle slightly uh, inclined in uh, proximal to uh, distal direction and from dorsal to palmar to allow uh, placement uh, at, uh, at in a joint and a small amount of uh, fluid should be injected. You see in the picture, it's, uh, we injected uh, 0.2 cc's of fluid. MP joints, we can increase the amount of fluid injected up to uh, probably half cc or slightly more. Uh, technically pretty similar to PIP joint uh, through a dorsal uh, aspect of the joint, which is uh, kept in extension. Inflation of the capsule is usually palpable or even visible, depending on the amount injected. And this is how it's done. Again, very similar positioning to uh, compared to the PIP joint. For the thumb, although the thumb arthritis is not uh, topic of this uh, lecture, I would like to just spend one slide talking about the injection to the thumb CMC joint. Uh, we can actually inject up to uh, one cc of fluid uh, with uh, 0.3 to 2.5 cc's of steroid and anywhere between 0.2 to 2.5 cc's of uh, lidocaine anesthetic uh, into the joint. The needle is pretty perpendicular to the skin uh, through the anatomic snuff box close to the EPB tendon to uh, stay as far as possible to the radial artery. Traction on the thumb uh, would open up the joint space and allow uh, a more facile injection and also decrease pain at the time of injection. Frequently, we uh, recommend to our patients to uh, use uh, oral uh, NSAIDs and ice the afternoon or evening after surgery. This uh, is how it looks uh, in clinical setting. Again, through anatomic snuff box at the base of thumb at the carpal, uh, slightly dorsal in the snuff box adjacent to the uh, EPB tendon. Thank you for your attention.